conservationists recently powered through Kenya's bush and four-wheel drive vehicles uh, to raise money for fencing for Mount Kenya and Mount Forest. Uh, they are aiming to prevent logging, poaching and conflict between humans and wildlife. VOA's Caroline Turner reports. At 6 a.m., the rumble of off-road vehicle engines disrupts the sleepy Yat Yat village for the annual rhino charge. But the last thing you will encounter here is a rhino. The event is organized by conservationists and the Kenya Wildlife Service to raise money to preserve Kenya's endangered forests and wildlife. The rhino charge has been held since 1989 at locations around Kenya and is now a world-famous off-road motor event. This year, it attracted 65 entrants, all pushing their four-wheel drive vehicles to the limit. Hey! <laughs> The challenge is to get through 13 checkpoints in the shortest distance possible through a course riddled with hills, valleys, and dry riverbeds. Yahya Village, this year's venue, is located in the Rift Valley, 350 kilometers northwest of the Kenyan capital, Nairobi. Drivers at one of the toughest sites, the notorious Gauntlet Stretch, even attempted to go straight up steep hillsides so they could cover the shortest distance. By mid-morning, most vehicles were feeling the strain. Oh, tough. No brakes, engine stalling. But other than that, we're still moving. This guy, this guy is awesome. This guy is like the king of this week. Today, he's hacked it. Spectators watched the cars from the cool shade of trees as the blistering heat took its toll on man and machine. Of the 65 registered competitors, only 22 managed to visit all 13 checkpoints over the nine hours set for the course. Mark Glenn and his team were the overall winner. The only recommendation is rather than 13 impossible sections, we would quite like maybe four or five next year. <laughs> Also recognized was Alan McKittrick's team, which raised the highest amount through sponsorship, $140,000. This year, the event raised a total of almost $1 million. Kenya Wildlife Services Director Julius Kipintich calls the event a success. Our strategy is to move it to another level, where we like to see the revenues uh, double, because the challenges for conservation are increasing rapidly. With climate change here with us, there's more work to be done, and we will be appealing to everybody in the world to support the rhino charge and conservation in Kenya. Robert Karayuki, a spectator, says the scorching heat was worth the fun and effort to conserve the environment. Oh yeah, I always enjoy this. It's something worth doing every year. The temperatures, as you can see, I'm really enjoying the temperatures here. Um, the hills are, were crazy. We had a very hard time out there. Over the years, the Rhino Charge has raised more than $10 million to fence off one of Kenya's most important water towers, the Aberdeer Forest. Stretching for about 400 kilometers, the fence encompasses 2,000 square kilometers of forest, keeping out illegal loggers, poachers, and preventing wildlife straying into nearby farms. It is the longest wildlife conservation fence in the world. The 400-kilometer fencing of the Mao Forest is expected to take about five years to complete. According to officials, the rhino charge is set to continue until all five of the main water catchment areas in Kenya are protected by electric fences. Carolyn Turner, VOA News.